Hi, hello, Dance Appreciation. Welcome to Dance 101. This is our first lecture. This will be primarily how we will do this class. Um, I will broadcast a lecture, we'll go over the PowerPoints, look at some videos, and then you will respond to the lecture under the assignment tab in Notebook. So for today, we're just gonna go over what that's gonna look like, because I'm sure that some of you are not familiar with Notebook. So let's, um, let's go there first, okay? So just a minute, I'm going to screen share. Okay. So we'll go to Noteball here. All right, so this is how we'll go on. When you come to this, if you're on, if you're on air now, you know how to do it. You would join the Hangout on air. Once the lecture is over, you'll be able to watch this at any time throughout the semester, okay? If you would like to um, connect with some of your other students, you can look at here. You can do, um, you can make a study group in the My Groups area, so you would add a group and then add whoever you want to be in your group, um, and that can be a, a private discussion area for, for whoever's in your group. You can also go here to documents, okay? I know there was some questions about this. So the private document, that's where you can keep your lecture notes, maybe you're particularly ambitious and you're already working on your pen pal letter or your performance review. You can put your notes if you, say you went to a performance next week and you don't want to forget it, so you could put notes in there and then upload it to this private folder. Now in the public folder, this is where you're going to find uh, the syllabus, the grading guidelines, okay, and in the grading guidelines, this was a generic grading guideline that I developed for both the in-person class and the dance online class. So it does say TA and group. You don't have a teaching assistant in this, in this course, so you can just ignore that. Just make sure that you put your name, you put the date, you put the title for, the, for your papers, okay? Here's the lecture notes and PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and click on that so you can see. So this will have everything that we're going to go over a little bit of the antiquity. Uh, we'll go into the history of ballet, history of modern, African dance, um, jazz dance, and then we'll do something at the end of creativity. So if you, um, if I went more too quickly through some of the PowerPoints and you want to revisit them without listening to me speak, you can go here in the document section, okay? Now this is probably going to be the most important part of your um, experience. Every week after the lecture, you will be asked to participate in a hangout, okay? I mean, in a discussion, excuse me, in a discussion. So you'll come here. So I'm gonna go ahead and develop one for this week so then you can see what that looks like, okay? So we'll say this is looking at dance, okay. That's gonna be, so your homework, okay, it's 10 points. This is your, so this is your attendance points for the course, okay? So this is how you're actually going to get participation points for attending. So you will, watch the video, post, you post um, your comments of what you see, okay? So and this is important, this is important because I'm asking you to take, when we, generally when we look at art, um, we wanna discuss the emotions that come about when we see art like that, or the story that you think that this dance may be saying. And that's what we're going to, we're gonna take that part of looking at dance away from what you write about. So what I want you to write about is pretend like you're writing um, to your mother or to a friend who's never seen the dance that, you've, that you, you just watched, okay? So you're gonna, so this is your attendance, you're gonna write about what you see. Then you will write, you will comment on two other classmates. I'm just writing this as we go so you can see how this works two other classmates um, posts, okay? 
for this particular assignment, okay, for this particular assignment, you will be commenting on whether or not your classmates or constructive criticism here, or constructive comment, commentary, whether or not your classmate was descriptive enough in the video that is going to be posted here, okay? So again, we want to take feelings, uh, feelings and anticipated meaning because frankly we really don't know what the choreographer's meaning is. And so right now I just want you to look at what is happening. So there were a lot of people on stage. They were running around. They rolled to the floor. At one point one woman was lifted up into the sky and she reached her hands towards the spotlight. Something like this, okay? So we're just we're just talking about what you see, what the dancers are doing. And why we why we look at dance in this way is because we're looking at the craft. We're looking at how the elements are being put together, the different um, functions of time, space, level changes, uh, musicality. So of course that will, you know, that sometimes does does um, produce some sort of emotion or react or like um, you know, sentimental reaction. But right now we want to take that those reactions and those, you know, it makes me feel flowery inside. Well, that doesn't tell me what you saw. So I want you to take away how it makes you feel and just really try to concentrate on the craft, on what you're seeing on the stage. And that's going to be for the entire semester, okay? So when you write your performance review at the end of the semester, you're going to be able, hopefully, to um, see the craft and then appreciate the historical foundations of that. So that's where we're going in this semester. So again, we're just taking out the taking out the feelings, taking out the sentimentality, and really just trying to look at it from objectively of what you see. So for this particular assignment, you're going to help your classmates with your um, with your commentary, okay? It can be good, you really described that well. I like how you said she rolled and reached up to the spotlight and that was an exciting part, okay? Um, or that was, you know, very, that was, that tempo was very quick and, uh, you know, something like this. So, so you will. In the description. I'm doing this with you right now so that you can see how this is going to work, okay? Then we're going to go over here and we're going to pull up the video that you're going to watch, okay? So this is why we use this platform for this particular type of classroom. It really um, allows um, us to watch, you know, you can't post YouTube, YouTube links directly onto D2L, so that's why this is a better platform for this class. Here it is. Okay. Let's watch this one. So it's really cool. And so you can, when you start getting, I'm showing you how to do this so that when you start to get into a little further into the classroom and you will be asked to, um, to investigate and research different YouTube videos, this is how you're going to do it. So you'll go to the YouTube, you click the, you know, copy paste the link, and then you can put it directly into your discussion posts or on the bulletin. If you find something interesting you'd like to share with the rest of the classroom, you can also post it directly onto the bulletin. Okay, now this is going to be a discussion. I can get down there. All right, well, we may have to do this later, but you get the idea. So this will be discussion board. There we go. I do allow late work because I realize that this is an online course and that um, it's more difficult to keep up with, with, with um, certain activities. But I do encourage you, you will not get full points for late work. So I would like you to... Um, Okay. 
Okay, so here, there you go. Now you know this is going to be due next week on the 29th at 11.59 p.m. Now I want to look at, have you take a look once this posts. It's been quite slow right now. So we'll go ahead and go back. We're going to pull up the PowerPoint now. Okay, so there it is posted. So view as student. So this is what it's going to look like for you. You come into assignments. Here's your um, syllabus agreement, which I hope most of you have watched the tutorial and seen it. And then here's your looking at dance. So it's due in seven days. You go watch the video, describe what you saw, comment on two other people. Okay? And if you look over here, you can see where your deadlines are going to be. So this is for Dance 100. This is looking at dance. Here's your first, here's your first deadline right here. Here is your syllabus agreement. It's due on Wednesday. And so this will, if you go up into your account settings, which I know the tutorial showed you, it will go into your Google Calendar and you can get notifications on your phone or your email, however you'd like to see when, when these deadlines are due. So there really is no reason to be late in this, in this classroom. All right, we're going to go ahead and go into, we're looking at dance, okay? So where do we find dance? I mean, I know we've all been exposed to dance at some level. We've seen, maybe seen it, um, seen some street dancing. Maybe in your house you see uh, your brother or sister or mom or dad dancing around. Um, perhaps some of you, I, I know already that some of you have been um, intimately involved with dance um, com competitively or take, have taken classes your whole life. So you've probably seen it on a stage at weddings and the clubs. Um, in the movies, on television. Uh, so you think you can dance is in its 12th season now, so I think that we're all somewhat familiar with that. And now we have, so what is dance, okay? So for, the, for this class, we're going to define dance as the expression of physical, emotional, or intellectual urges, okay, through rhythmic, ordered, and dynamic human movement. Now that last part is very important because we may have a physical urge, like I have a physical urge to yawn, okay, that's not a dance, okay, or I may have an emotional urge to cry, that's not a dance. So it's the bottom part that makes it a dance, it's that intentional, um, the intentional movement that is done to a rhythm, pattern, and it's dynamic, dynamic meaning ever-changing, okay, so um, it's that Rhythmic, ordered, and dynamic, okay? That's what makes dance, dance. It's a very intentional movement. So what is rhythm? Okay, rhythm is not just the beat. That's what often what we hear when people say, you ask them what a rhythm is, but a rhythm is a repeated pattern of emphasis. For example, if you have a waltz, that is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, so the emphasis is on the one, okay? so. Um, it could be a march where you have you have a two four count and the emphasis is on one two one two one two. So these are um, these are this is what rhythm is. So it's a repeated pattern of emphasis, and I want you to try to look at at movement and try to find those repeated pattern of emphasis. I think that we are so much more accustomed to hearing music that it's easier for us to count and see where the emphasis is. So throughout this course, I'd like you to see the movement and see what are they emphasizing. Maybe somebody does a, a large step on the one and then they sway two, three, and one, two, and they roll to the ground. So you'll see as you start to become more familiarized with, with uh, choreography, how the dancers are moving their bodies just like a musician is playing the music. And so what about order? Some people prefer their dances to be neat, but we're not talking about order as in it's tidy, we all have straight lines, okay? But we're talking about a controlled sequence of events, 
Okay, so it's a very, again, a very intentional, it's a conscious decision to control your sequence of events. And that means how long, how long is the dance? When does it start? How many dancers are there? Um, if there's one, where does that dancer choose to go in space? Even if they're improvising, who gave them permission to do so? How do we know when the dance is over? What kind of limitations were put on the dancer during improvisation? So I, what I'm trying to get at here is that dance isn't just, um, it's not random or unthoughtful, okay? It is very, it is very um, intentional, it's very precise, even if it's a messy dance, if it's not ballet, maybe it's people running all over the stage, well, I guarantee in rehearsal, those people have no which direction they're running in. Now, our last, um, our last uh, descriptive word, dynamic, okay? So we often think of dynamic as being vigorous and powerful, okay? But in dance, we're speaking dynamic in the meaning of changing over time. Okay, and we're really going to look into that as, as we look at the history of dance and how it has evolved throughout time. And that's what we're speaking of in di uh, when we're talking about a dynamic movement. And so what does it take besides a dancer to make dancing theatrical? And that's what, primarily what we're studying in this course is the history of theater dance, okay? Uh, not so much ritual dance and religious dance, but we're really focusing on theater dance here. So what makes, what makes dancing theatrical? Well, it's having something to dance about, a place to dance, okay? Again, having that intentional um, place is very important. So it's not randomly walking around. I mean, you can do that, but that's not theater dance because in theater dance, you have an intentional place and you have a place where the audience is. You usually have some kind of lighting so that you can be seen, um, something to wear, a costume, and there's usually some music or other kind of sound accompaniment. All right, so we have scenery, props, um, lights, costumes, everything is very intentional in theater dance. Okay, so and we just as I sp spoke about earlier, every culture expresses itself through music and dance, and many cultures have a very long and dynamic history of theatrical dance, particularly Japan, Kabuki, thousands of years old, Chinese, China's Peking Opera is very old. Um, but right now, as again, to reiterate, we will be focusing on theater dance and Western civilization. Um, and of course, the emphasis in this, this dance appreciation will be dance in America, what's happening and what has happened through dance in America. We've had a lot of um, organic movements that have spread throughout Western civilization that started here in the United States, and it's, um, we're going to focus a lot on that. So we're going to go ahead and stop here for the day. I really just wanted you to get an idea of how Hold on, where am I here? I just really wanted to get um give you an idea on how this is going to work this semester, what I expect of you each week. So each week we will have a lecture. Each week you will be asked to, um, to do a discussion post. And then we will have a choreographer midterm, which I will have more, there, there will be more information on that as we get closer to the midterm. There will be two written assignments um, and a PowerPoint presentation, okay? So I think that uh, for now, we're just going to stop there. We'll go into the history of Western civilization, um, particularly into Greek, Greek dance, and how that has affected uh, the origins of ballet. So that will be for next week. For this week, I would like you just to really think about dance objectively, taking your emotions and your feelings outside of it. I'd really like you to play around a little bit with Noble so that you become very familiar with how this platform works for the course management. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'm available uh, in person on campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 11 and 1.30. Okay, we'll see you soon.